Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. This is episode eight of Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues. Uh, it's a little strange, so we're going to have a visit with Dr. Todd Grande to see if we can shed any light on the psychology of this. I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research, and I still wouldn't look at this one without embarrassment. But every time I glanced at it, there was something unresolved. Hi folks, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues Part 8 is a little different than the other ones. It almost has a religious feel to it. It starts off with an uncredited appearance by the biblical story of the Tower of Babel. Then it goes on to talk about the strife that the differences amongst us make, as well as the creative energy that it fosters. Because this is put out as more of a philosophical or religious piece, I'm not going to criticize it. In the meantime, I think I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Todd Grande to talk about the personalities of Flat Earth. Channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today we wanted to answer a question that I received about the Flat Earth movement and what possible personality profile might we see associated with it or mental health symptoms. So in case you don't know, the Flat Earth Movement, this is a group that believes that the Earth is flat as opposed to spherical. And this isn't something that they're doing just to be funny or to kind of mix things up. Many of the members of this group actually believe the Earth is flat. So there's a real conviction here in terms of belief. This is something that they actually believe. Now first it's important to point out here that I can't and won't diagnose anybody who's not my client. So really here I'm just speculating about what we might see in terms of personality or mental health symptoms with some people that have this belief. There could be people that are members of that movement who have no mental health disorders and have a personality profile that's within normal limits, whatever normal is. So that's an important place to start. Is I didn't even know before I heard about this that there was debate over whether the earth was flat or spherical. I didn't know this was a thing. Usually when you hear about what some would call a conspiracy theory, it's about something that's at least debatable. For example, climate change. No matter what you believe about climate change, most people would have to agree there's still a debate going on. There are still a sizable portion of the population there that has doubts about climate change. I'm not aware of any sizable portion of the population that believes the earth is flat, other than the small group, of course, the flat earth movement. Now, some may look at this and say, this is really just skepticism. This is good. In the scientific community, we need to have skepticism. We need to look at theories and be flexible. We need to be willing to believe something different than we believed before if we see substantial evidence that moves in that direction. But that's not really what we're dealing with here when we talk about the flat earth movement. This is beyond skepticism. This is really discounting all evidence. Now, another interesting point that aligns this with conspiracy theory is if you look at the flat earth movement and kind of their core beliefs, they really seem to have a thing against NASA. And of course, NASA would be an agency that's gathered a lot of evidence that demonstrates the earth is in fact spherical. So it makes sense they'd have to deal with NASA at some level in their belief system. But it's interesting because usually when we think of conspiracies, especially if we think of something that rises to a delusional level, and again, not everybody in this movement would be classified as delusional, but if somebody were delusional, a lot of times when we look at delusions, we see agencies like the CIA mentioned, the FBI, a general distrust for the government, but not NASA. It's curious that they would target NASA and target their credibility. It makes sense to some degree to have a healthy distrust of the CIA or the FBI because they are in part a secret organization. NASA is not a secret organization really. So I find this to be kind of an interesting facet. So this really counters this point that this is just healthy skepticism. No, there is a real conspiracy theory component I think too the Flat Earth Movement. Also, we know members of this Flat Earth Movement, Flat Earthers, tend to believe in a lot of other conspiracy theories. So they may 
believe in this theory of the flat earth, but they also have other theories, including the CIA and the FBI and other more common conspiracy theories. Another thing I find interesting here is that there doesn't seem to be any amount of evidence that can convince a lot of these flat earthers that the world is in fact spherical. So of course there's pictures that NASA's taken and all that and those are discounted. But even if you have other evidence, and of course there is an amazing amount of evidence supporting the earth is spherical, no evidence seems to rise to the level of significant for many people in this group. So they really can't be swayed from this belief no matter what is put in front of them. If evidence is presented and it appears convincing, oftentimes they say it was fabricated. So we end up here in kind of a logical dead end where there's no way to really reason and move forward. So again, this is a departure from adhering to the scientific method. If these individuals were really committed to the scientific method, they would look at the evidence and at least be willing to consider that the earth is spherical. And that's not really what we see here. With this group, we also see this tendency to believe what's seen. At least that's how it's kind of framed. Like they believe evidence that they can see directly. Well, this is a pretty high burden of proof. A lot of us believe things that we can't see directly. We, at some level, take people's word for it. We take the word of scientists and other experts. But many people wouldn't have first-hand knowledge that the world is spherical. So this is a really high burden of proof, and they use what they call science, these experiments, in essence, to try to beat science. They would probably say to extend science or to advance science. But really, they're talking about first-hand observations only, and that's not everything that's included in the scientific method. The scientific method does involve a community that builds on knowledge, that runs experiments, that looks for replication, and shares information. What we really see here is a number of individuals going out and pursuing single experiments. Now, this may seem like science, and again, to some degree, there's a little bit of overlap, but it's really not the same thing. So what could be going on here in terms of personality or mental health in areas like this? Well, again, there could be nothing going on. Now, with others, it could also be a sense of belonging. There could also be some extreme personality traits in play here. Particularly, I would think, low openness to experience, so being very rigid and dogmatic, although you could also argue very high openness to experience could get you to the same place through a different method, extended fantasy, creativity, and imagination. In terms of agreeableness, it could be low agreeableness, simply being a contrarian, looking at evidence and saying, no, I'm going to discount this evidence no matter what it is. So antagonistic, argumentative, that could be a possibility. In terms of mental health, there are a lot of potential explanations, paranoid personality features, schizotypal personality features. So with the paranoid, of course, we'd have people that are paranoid and distrustful. With schizotypal features, we would see somebody who has unusual thinking, odd beliefs, certainly consistent with the flat earth movement to some degree. Again, for some of the individuals, that could be what's happening. And for some, it could just be a delusional situation. And we could see some of that with cluster A personality disorders like paranoid and schizotypal. But we could also see it with an illness like schizophrenia. And there's some other disorders as well that have a delusional component. And really, when we look at what qualifies as a delusion, it would be when somebody believes something that's contrary to overwhelming, significant evidence. And that seems to be what's going on here some of the time. Again, there's a lot of reasons somebody could join an organization like this or have these beliefs. A delusional frame of mind would just be one of these reasons, the presence of delusions. Another bit of evidence that kind of points to the presence of delusions maybe in some of these instances would be if you look at the explanations of how the Earth is flat as opposed to spherical in this movement, the explanations defending the flat Earth model are extremely complex, much harder to believe much more full of fantasy than the actual scientific explanations that we believe are true. So the Earth is spherical, and its nature as being a sphere makes sense in terms of bodies orbiting the Earth and the Earth orbiting the Sun and all that. 
the flat earth movement has to make up all of these really unusual mechanisms in terms of physics to explain how the earth could be flat. And of course, one of the toughest would be how come nobody's ever reached the end of the earth and just driven off or sailed off. The popular explanation I hear for this is that NASA is guarding this wall of ice that exists at the edge of the earth. So again, very fantastical explanations compared to what we actually know from science. So the last thing I'll cover here is really what I initially thought when I heard the flat earth movement. Remember, I initially thought that this can't be real. I didn't know this was a thing. I thought maybe this was a group of individuals who just wanted to call attention to how quickly we believe in what's popular, what's held by conventional science. We don't really question it. We just believe it. Turns out that doesn't seem, again, to be what this movement is about, but I think it's still an interesting point. It does make us pay attention to this idea of how do we know something's true? Are we a little too quick to just believe something? Somebody says something, we see it on TV, we see it on the internet, and we believe it. But maybe we should be a little more cautious, not to the point of discounting all evidence, but just healthy skepticism. So I think there are a lot of lessons to be learned from this flat earth movement, and really the whole movement and everything we see here is fairly fascinating from a personality perspective and again potentially from a mental health perspective. I, I thought I'd expand on Dr. Grande's comments a little bit. Man has been conducting organized scientific inquiry for at least 2,500 years. Eratosthenes was an early practitioner of science. It was his famous stick in the sun experiment that provided an early and surprisingly accurate estimate of the circumference of the earth. This also set up a key tenet of science, and that is that we build on the work of others. Specifically, Eratosthenes did not determine that the Earth was a sphere. He simply measured the circumference of a sphere. The spherical nature of the Earth was determined by others that came before him. Likewise, Aristarchus did not determine that the Moon was in orbit around the spherical Earth. He used the phases of that orbiting moon to estimate the distance from the Earth to the Sun. This continued until a religious revival in the early 19th century. As a result of this, Robotham and others rejected science. The result was zetetic astronomy. In zetetic astronomy, there was a rejection of the globular Earth. Written at a time before space travel and requiring the rejection of all aspects of navigation known at the time, with the emergence of the internet, opportunists rediscovered zetetic astronomy and began to attract followers. Eric DeBay, a yoga instructor from Thailand, developed quite a following and outlined all of the tenets of modern flat earth theory. His postings on the internet originated the flat earth phrases, the horizon rises to eye level, water always seeks its level, gravity is a myth, all pictures from space are CGI. His work was so extensive that there is absolutely no original thought in the flat earth that was not originally expressed by Eric Dubay. I'm going to digress from Dr. Grande slightly here. He discusses the need in the flat earth community to personally see all evidence and feels that it's a form of concrete ideation. While I am in agreement with this, the reason that we see this demand for personal experience is that it is indeed a very high standard to meet, and it cuts down on the attacks that Flat Earth has to sustain. For example, you could be a mission control engineer at NASA headquarters and state that you have personal knowledge of space. All they have to do is say, well, have you ever been there yourself? No. Well, that's just your opinion then. Likewise, we see extremely restrictive and limited definitions of the scientific method insisted upon, even for measurements, not as an effort to ensure good science is being done, but to exclude the truth. Gravity must be denied in all forms because any object greater than 300 miles in diameter under the influence of gravity would collapse into a sphere. Essentially, it would exclude the possibility of a flat Earth. Space itself must be denied because if we admit that space exists or the GPS system is from satellites, we have to admit to the possibility that there could be photographs of the Earth that show it to be spherical. It is all carefully planned out to make the globe Earth 
unprovable and the flat earth undeniable. Flat earth is a belief system unassailable by scientific inquiry and untouchable by contrary facts. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Hey guys, take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down there. These videos are getting thousands of views and hundreds of likes. Let's see if we can bring those numbers a little closer to the number of views. All right, we'll see you again soon.